It seems pretty simple, but when we're creating the scope for a penetration test, we need to understand what sorts of targets there are so that we can make sure that the proper things are included in our scope. And one of the first things you really need to think about is whether or not this is an internal attack or an external attack. And the difference being with a firewall in place, the company is barricaded from the outside. So whether you are inside and you have full access to the network and the, the network inside, or you're on the internet only, and you are trying to get in through the firewall to compromise servers and et cetera, et cetera. This is something that's going to drastically change how you do your penetration test. So it must be included in the scope, whether it's gonna be internal or external. And then if it is an internal attack does that mean that you have vpn access from the outside to get in or does it mean that you are physically going to be inside the network because while vpn will give you a lot of access there are some things that it's not going to give you access to that physical access would like for example you're not going to have direct access to the physical computers to try to compromise them that way and then also the dmz are you going to have access to the dmz a lot of times servers will exist in kind of this middle no man's land where the firewall has them firewalled off from both the internet and the internal network so are you going to have access to the dmz if you don't have access to the internal network all of these questions need to be answered and they need to be spelled out very clearly in your scope and there's a bunch of other issues that we need to talk about too. For example, is this going to be strictly a first party attack or are we going to try to test third party people as well? Now we've talked about the legality and what's involved with making sure that you have the ability and the permission to access third party servers, but that might not even be in your scope, right? When you're creating the scope, maybe the third party services aren't even one of your targets, in which case all of that stuff about the legality is a moot point because we're not going to be testing them. So when you're creating your scope, determine way in advance whether or not you're going to have to get those third party authorizations. And if they're not part of the scope, you don't have to worry about it. And of course, when I'm talking about third party things, I'm talking about Google or AWS or Azure versus things like just local servers and local facilities. Then we have issues to think about like physical, right? Physical access. Should I try to break into the actual server building? You know, if you have a data center, should I physically try to break in? Are you even hired to test the physical security at all? You may not even be hired. They may not want to test that at all. They may have a third party security company that they've hired. And so this is not even something that they want you to test at all. In which case, don't put it in your scope because then you're wasting your time and potentially giving Getting yourself in trouble for breaking into something that you didn't have permission to break into. Next, the users. Now we've talked about whether or not you're legally allowed to test users, but again, should you test them? Are they one of the things that the, the customer wants you to target? Are they a target at all? If so, which of the users are targets? For example, maybe you're not allowed to pen test the administrative staff because they're too busy and they don't uh, they don't really have technical access. I don't know what the reasons are, but make sure that it's spelled out in advance. Maybe they only hired you to test the marketing team because the marketing team keeps tweeting out passwords to the website or something. I don't know, but make sure that users, if they are part of the target, are in, written in your scope. And then of course, be sure to put in your scope exactly what tactics you are or are not allowed to use, like spear phishing or stealing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because that will determine what you do. And again, that's going to determine whether or not your client is happy with the pen test that you provide. And then Wi-Fi. Now, this is something that I, I hopefully everybody wants to have tested, but you should make sure it's a target. Is this something they want tested? And if so, which SSIDs? Do they only want you to test the public-facing SSIDs? Do they want you to test the security of the private SSIDs to make sure that they really are private and people aren't broken in and you know hacking and using the internal SSIDs? If they do not want you to look at Wi-Fi at all, I encourage you to put that in your scope because it's such a huge vector for attack that if they don't want you to look at it at all, that's a little bit foolish on their part. So try to encourage them to include some sort of Wi-Fi testing and explain to them why it's important because it's such an easy vector to get in. And usually walls don't stop it. Somebody could literally stand outside of the building and you know hack from the parking lot. And that's not something that you want to leave untested. 
And then lastly, I just want to talk about apps or applications, which access points to the data. And I don't mean Wi-Fi access points here. I mean, which places that access data uh, are in scope. If there's a mobile app that this company uses, are you allowed to, are you supposed to test that app for security? If so, that's going to require more work on your part to get in, you know, get a hold of that app to look at it. Are you supposed to look at the code or just sniff the packets that it uses when it connects? Is that in scope and exactly what aspect of testing apps are involved? And this is important to note that this is a place where third party uh, authorizations might come into place, not only because the apps are going to be hosted and probably rely on some sort of cloud data service, but also what about credit card processing uh, plugins and stuff for the applications themselves. There may be data that you don't have access to or that you're not allowed to access. And it's important to make sure that you know that in advance when you're testing apps or different ways to access the data. Again, there are lots of things that we can test when we do a penetration test. It's important though that we select the targets that are going to make the client not only the most happy, but also the most secure and get the most out of the penetration test that they're paying for you to do. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.